hello everyone welcome back to your own chemistry channel and today i am going to discuss the instrumentation of uv visual spectroscopy and presentation of spectral data but before that if you have not subscribed my channel then please do subscribe and also like and share my videos so friends the instrument which is used to record uv visual spectrum is called as uv visual spectrophotometer or uv visual spectrometer and this instrument measures the percentage of radiation absorbed which is called as percentage absorbance or the percentage of radi radiations transmitted which is called as percentage transmittance and it compares the intensity of incident uh, transmitted radiations with that of uh, incident light okay and the most commonly used spect uh, spectrophotometers consist of a uh, radiation source a monochromator having two slits one is called as your entrance slit and the second one is called as exit slit and a prism in between okay then we have a beam splitter which splits the radiations uh, radiation into two beams of equal intensity and here we have mirrors to reflect the radiation and this is sample compartment having sample cell and the reference cell and here we have photo detectors consisting of photo cells then amplifier which amplifies the signal and finally we have a data recorder okay so let us explain these various components one by one so first we will take up the radiation source so friends most commonly used radiation, radiation sources are tungsten filament and hydrogen deuterium lamp and tungsten filament is a rich source of visual radi radiations whereas the hydrogen deuterium lamp is a rich source of uv radiations and the radiation source it emits the radiations of different wavelengths okay and then these radiations are passed through the entrance slit of the monochromator and the role of this slit is to produce a parallel beam of the radiations okay then these radiations are passed uh, passed through the prism and we know that prism disperses the light into different wavelengths and if we have visual light here then the prism will split uh, the visual light uh, into the seven constituent colors or the seven constituent wavelengths okay then the wavelengths coming out of the prism are directed towards the exit slit in this uh, fashion oh, understood and only one wavelength will be selected from the exit slit then that radiation is allowed to fall on the beam splitter and the beam sp uh, splitter will split that radiation into two beams of equal intensity and first beam will be passed through the sample cell containing the solution of sample in a suitable solvent and by sample we mean the compound whose uv visual spectrum we want to study and the second beam will be passed through the reference cell and the reference cell uh, contains pure solvent only okay and these sample cell and the reference cell are made up of uh, silica or quartz because silica or quartz don't absorb uv visual radiations glass cells can be used only in case of visual light because glass strongly absorbs uv radiations okay then the intensities of transmitted uh, lights from the sample cell and the reference cell uh, is measured with the help of photo detectors having photo cells and the photo detector also calculate the ratio of uh, intensity of the beam transmitted from the sample cell and the reference cell okay and this instrument automatically subtracts the absorbance due to the solvent from the absorbance of the solution because uh, in this way we will have the absorbance only due to the sample let us explain the absorbance of the solution will be equal to the absorbance of sample plus absorbance of solvent and when we subtract the absorbance of the solvent then we will be left with the absorbance of sample only okay and all these measurements are made uh, with the help of uh, or in the form of electric signals and Uh, those signals are then passed uh, to the amplifier which amplifies the signal and the data recorder finally records the absorbance as a function of wavelength in the form of a graph okay so we have wavelength along the x axis and absorbance along the y axis okay likewise 
the radiations of different wavelengths can be selected from the uh, exit slit of the monochromator and then those radiation will be passed through the sample cell and the reference cell and finally their absorbances will be recorded as a function of wavelength uh, by the data recorder and graph of this uh, type is obtained or curve of this type is obtained and this curve or this graph is called as UV visible spectrum of the compound or the sample and you can clearly see that this is the value of the wavelength this is the value of wavelength which have maximum absorbance so it is called as the lambda maximum of the compound and this is the characteristic of the compound and the compound is identified with the help of this lambda maximum okay and further the number of peaks in the spectrum depends upon the number of electronic excitations which are possible within the molecules of the sample okay and a molecule can have more than one excitation or electronic excitation possible and this is due to the uh, you know presence of different energy levels uh, within the molecule let us explain here that these are the molecular uh, energy levels and uh, this is the ground state this is the first excited state and this is the second excited state okay and uh, let the electron is excited from e0 to e1 and uh, let us suppose that only one transition is allowed in the molecule then we will have only one peak in the uv visible spectrum okay and like this their absorbance and wavelength and only one peak will be in the UV visual spectrum and the wavelength uh, having energy corresponding to this energy gap will be absorbed okay and that will be the lambda maximum for this uh, transition let the wavelength is lambda 1 okay and the lambda 1 will be the lambda maximum of this uh, peak understood now let us suppose that another electronic excitation is possible okay and the ele another electron is excited from e0 to e2 now how many transitions are there two transitions are taking place within the molecule now there will be two peaks in the spectrum and let lambda 2 is the wavelength having energy corresponding to this uh, energy difference then this will be the lambda maximum of the second peak okay like this lambda 2 so in this way the number of peaks in the spectrum depends upon the number of allowed electronic transition within the molecule understood and further we obtain broad pre uh, broad peaks in the spectrum okay we don't observe sharp peaks but actually we should have had two sharp peaks in the spectrum that is one peak at the lambda 1 maximum and another peak at lambda 2 because these two wavelengths have the maximum absorbance because these two wavelengths has been absorbed by the compound so the one peak will be at lambda 1 sharp peak and another uh, sharp peak will be at lambda 2 as I said because these two wavelengths has been absorbed and their absorbance is maximum but actually in the UV visual spectrum we obtain what broad peaks okay these are the broad peaks and these broad peaks are called as broad bands broad bands okay and I will explain the reason of this when I'm, I will explain the band nature of UV visual spectrum in my next video. Okay, so keep watching my videos. And here I have drawn the UV spectrum of 1,3-butadiene. And uh, you can clearly see from this uh, curve that lambda maximum for the 1,3-butadiene is 217 nanometers and its molar extinction coefficient is equal to 20,900 which is more than 10 raised to power 4 so this will be a high intensity absorption and I, I have explained it in my previous video that the value of molar extinction coefficient 
tells us that whether the transition will be or the absorption will be a high intensity absorption absorption or the low intensity absorption okay so friends this is all about the instrumentation of uv visible spectroscopy and presentation of spectral data and as i said in my next video uh, i am going to discuss the band nature of uv visual spectrum so keep watching my videos like and share my videos and subscribe my channel thank you very much